hands over your hearts and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, colors. Good evening. Good evening. This is this is amazing. Um, when we put it up in our office, it wasn't quite this grand, but it was so impactful. Being Oakland born and being a veteran myself, my father was a 101st Airborne Combat Medic, and he came out of Oakland as well via uh, Louisiana. It's it's about time. And. Uh, you don't know what we do at the Vet Center, I highly encourage you if you are a veteran or if, even if you're not to come on down and visit us. We're always happy to see you. The Oakland Vet Center is down by the Oakland Airport. We provide readjustment counseling services for current and prior service members and their families forever for free. We are part of the VA system. I work for the man. But we're a little different and even if you're not coming in for readjustment counseling, we want our office to be that place where even if you didn't come to the right place, you came to the right place. So proud of you, Mr. Clark. This is an absolutely wonderful thing that you've done. And your life's work being realized has to be so gratifying. Very happy to be here and enjoy. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for showing up. It's good to see the participation this evening. Before we get around to the exhibit, I'd like to talk briefly about black military history. Four decades ago, a group of us came together to talk about the contributions that blacks have made in the defense of this nation. It was history that couldn't be found in any institution in this country. We took it upon ourselves to travel around this country to talk about the contributions of blacks in the defense of the nation. We currently have an exhibit on display in Ohio at the National African American Museum. We also have a sculpture of Colonel Young on display in Houston, Texas at the National Museum of Buffalo Soldiers. And I'm pleased to announce today, we have just released a book from another well-known Oakland artists. Maury Turner's family gave us permission to publish his book on African Americans in the defense of the country. The book came off the press on Friday and we will be making that book available to the Oakland School District. Cypress Security Company has bought the first 100 copies of the book that will be donated to the schools. With the With, with that being said, I'd like to talk about Mr. Clark. This is a fantastic job that he's done. We worked over the weekend putting the exhibit up, and I had the opportunity to talk to him about every single picture that went up on this wall. It was the most enjoyable two-day conversation that I've had in a long time. Thank you, brother. You know, uh, our interest in military history, in black military history, it's not about glorifying war, and it's not about creating heroes. This is about American history. It's the part of American history that has been overlooked for many, many years. And I am delighted that our community has taken the initiative to mount this beautiful display here in our Oakland City Hall. And Mayor, we appreciate you for taking the initiative to have this done. I would like to, uh, to deviate for one second to introduce Mr. Howard Jackson, 
Howard is the chairman of the National Minority Military Museum Foundation, located here in Oakland. And Howard, would you please come up? He has a copy of the publication that we'd like to present to Mr. Clark in honor of his work. Sir, it's our pleasure to contribute and add to this illustrious exhibition that you put on. It further exemplifies what we need to have to tell the children. Tell the children that we have been a part of this country for so many years and it's been unknown and they should know the legacy and they should know what their parents, grandparents, and you have contributed. Laurie's work reinforces that. Thank you. I want to add my deep appreciation for everyone who's here today. I also want to recognize that our Vice Mayor, Annie Campbell Washington, is here. I think, I think some of our other officials would be here, but there is closed session still going on. I know it's a busy council night. Thank you for your service. We do not say that often enough. Thank you for your service. And thank you, Mr. Clark, for your vision. Your vision of bringing honor and stories of the past to us today and the role that African Americans have played in our military history. I had no idea that Harriet Tubman was a spy. <laughs> Did you? She was a member of our military history. Thank you for bringing that to light. These images represent stories. Stories of bravery, stories of dedication, and stories of service. Thank you for bringing that dignity and that history to the people's place, and that is the City Hall. So I just want to commend you, Mr. Clark, as we all have done today, for having this vision, for putting together these stories, these images. And again, thank you everyone who is here for your service. This is one of many ways that we will celebrate Veterans Day this year. I know that there are many people here who will be involved in continuing to show our appreciation to the men and women who have dedicated themselves to serving our country. So thank you to all of you. And as we go into our Veterans Day weekend, let us remember that we cannot say it often enough. Thank you for your service. Thank you all for coming out to help us celebrate the history of African Americans in the military from the Revolutionary War through World War World War II. Um, the exhibit starts here and goes around to uh, the Spanish-American War, Buffalo Soldiers, World War I, and World War II back there. Um, I would love to, first of all, to have all the, all the uh, volunteers who helped to put up this exhibit to raise your hand or actually come out in front of I don't remember names that well. But I want everyone to be excited. Yeah. And especially especially Eric I bought, I mean, I'm sorry, Eric Murphy of George Gordon Gallery, who's also our art commissioner for the County of Alameda. I think it's District 3, right, Eric? <laughs> Eric actually hung this whole exhibit himself. We just helped. I mean, we have to hang uh, these, um, this exhibit from these fishing wires on the hooks here. And I had no idea how we were going to do that. But Eric stepped up and said, I'll, I'll help you guys. But actually, he didn't help. He did it himself, but we assisted him. Could everybody give him a round of applause?
This exhibit is very personal for me. I am a, a Vietnam veteran. My grandfather uh, served in World War I. The ex I have been collecting African Americans in um, African American military uh, memorabilia and art and what have you since about the 1980s. It all started with that one photograph that's on the, in the World War I on the left hand side of the, of the doors over here in the center. That is a photograph um, of the um, 801st Pioneer Group out of uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I was born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm trying to make a real long story short. What happened was, while I was uh, back in the early 80s when I was uh, looking for some, some stuff, like my place is filled with stuff. I'm a collector. By the way, how many collectors are here? You collect anything, stamps, whatever. Well, I'm a passionate collector, and especially when it comes to African Americans in the military from the Revolutionary War through World War II. Um, but in any case, let me get back to what I was saying. So I went into the store, this um, um, antique store over on Adeline, still there, called People's Bazaar. And there was an elderly lady there that used to help me whenever I come in. I would never buy anything because I didn't have any money. I just wanted to look at stuff because it was too expensive. Uh, so anyway, she, one day she came in. I, mean, she, I, came, I went in there and she, I'd never seen her move that fast before. She said, I have something that I know you're going to like. I know you'll buy this. She said, you must buy this. So she went back in her closet and uh, I saw this dust coming out. She pulled out this, this old frame. Uh, photograph that looked like it was about ready to fall apart. She said, well, I'll give this to you for $11 if you promise me that you will restore this. I said, ma'am, I don't have any money. I, you know, I, 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 not even $11 at this point. She said, well, I, I'll give it to you for $10. I, I said $11. I don't know how much she said, but it, it went down to about $10. Anyway, I went ahead and bought it, and I had it restored. And um, fast forward to earlier this year, Dr. Joseph of uh, the Vet Center invited me to do an um, African American in the military exhibit. So I had to do some, some research on everything around here so I could write descriptions on it. And I found out that that particular photograph uh, was made in Louisville, Kentucky. It was what is now uh, downtown Louisville, Kentucky. And it's called, it was um, Fort Zachary Taylor. My grandfather actually um, joined the service, or was drafted rather, in the same year that this particular photograph was made. So we're sure that he's in that photograph somewhere. Me, me and my brothers, we see on the back, I can show anybody who wants to see it, on the back row is a, is a guy that looks exactly like my youngest brother. So that was, uh, that was the start of this whole, collect, uh, this whole collection. Not only that, the reason that I, I collect, people ask me, why do you only collect from the Revolutionary War through World War II? These were the pioneers. These, were, these, these women and men fought in on foreign soils for other people's freedom when they didn't have freedom here, right here in the United States. They were fighting racism everywhere in the in the service, that, um, in the, in the civilian camps, wherever they were in the, uh, in the United States. They faced discrimination, but they went ahead. They wanted they wanted to prove. Uh, many cases that they were just as um, um, they were well, anyway. I get kind of choked up when I'm talking about this. But anyway, uh, the fact of the matter is, they're the pioneers. They're whatever progress that anyone made, any black person or any person of color made in the military, came on the backs and the blood and the sweat and stress and whatever else of these people from this period because. Uh, in, um, I think it's April of 1948, President Truman integrated the armed forces. And uh, anything that happened prior to that had to do with um, African Americans who served earlier uh, and endured whatever they had to do in order to make, make sure that the, uh, the future uh, for us here in America is free. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to go on and on and on. But thank you so much for coming out. It is such an absolute honor to be here today. I want to thank Mayor Libby Schaff for taking this time and expressing how important it is for us to thank you for your service today. And especially
especially to recognize the contributions of our African American residents here in Oakland in our military service. I had the deep honor uh, to work with Charles Blacher as uh, co-chair of a, an honor flight uh, to take veterans of World War II back to Washington, D.C. Veterans of World War II who had never seen their monument before. We flew with them back to Washington, D.C. last year, and Charles was instrumental in making that happen, so I am deeply appreciative to him for his leadership here in Oakland. But for me personally, just for a moment to talk uh, deeply personally about that experience, it was an opportunity for just a, a, a true education in our country to, for what African American service men and women have given to our country. And Mr. Clark said it best when they didn't even have their own freedom here in our country to give of themselves in this way. I will never, <laughs> never understand that but it forever changed me, and I am so uh, grateful to be standing here today, to be able to serve this beautiful city, to be able to serve all of you, and to say thank you. Mr. Clark, thank you for what you have um, brought to us here in City Hall. This is such a beautiful building and made more beautiful by what you have gathered and uh, the stories that you've gathered uh, to allow everyone who visits, visits uh, our City Hall right now to learn this history and truly understand it. So thank you for the opportunity to share with you today. Thank you for being here, and happy Veterans Day. I, I too, I just want to thank everybody for uh, coming forward with this exhibit. I'd, I'd really love to see an expanded version of this exhibit at the Oakley Museum of California, uh, not too far from here, that, to, to get even more people to be able to wear this. A lot of people come to City Hall, even more people come to the museum, and so, um, Let's, let's talk with the museum directors, see if they can curate something next year about this. This would be fabulous. Um, thank you all. Most, most importantly, thank you all who, who have served our country uh, in uh, war or served our country in peacetime in the military as well. Um, it, it's, it's unimaginable to, for many of us who have not been in battle to know what people have gone through. We can't know what people have gone through unless you've actually been through it. So those of you who have been in service during wartime, um, I, I just thank you for what you're doing to serve our country and to protect your fellow soldiers and to protect all of us. Uh, and this is an important notation, more than a notation, an important demonstration of how many people uh, and how many African Americans served our country in, in so many wars. And we know that uh, our military today has a disproportionately high percentage of people who are African American in the military compared to population in our country at large, and yet has a disproportionately low percentage of colonels and generals who are African American in today's military, although probably more than there were a long time ago. So let's hope those percentages change to be more, uh, more appropriate and more fair. Uh, but until then, thank you again for all your tremendous work, and it's an honor to be here to, to meet you all. Hi, it's Vice Mayor Campbell Washington and Councilmember Calls want to come join me. Um, it is our honor to present to you in honor of the opening of this exhibition and also a Veterans Day, an official City of Oakland gold pin. So if you can, if the veterans can please step forward and enjoy this honor, please. Don't be shy. Everybody loves these pins. You know you want one. Come forward, please.